Hello and welcome. I am Ryan Page. I am an application specialist. We're going to be discussing company setup and customization. More specifically, we're going to be talking about user-defined attributes. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay. What is a custom user-defined attribute? Well, a user-defined attribute, uh, those are fields that contain data or information populated by you, the user. They are not template attributes. Template attributes would be like a name or a profile or a material. These are these attributes you can place any information on. Comment, preliminary mark, user fields one through four, concrete breaks, submittal information, those types of information that you find on the tabs of the user-defined attribute dialog box for your objects. That's what we're talking about here. And these, what defines them is contained in what we call an input file or specifically an object.imp file. So that's where we kind of dictate the parameters of what an attribute is. Um, now Tecla has numerous UDAs pertaining to all aspects of concrete and steel and rebar and all that sort of thing. Um, and, and it references many files to bring in the UDAs specific to those types of objects. Now, custom UDAs are created by you and implemented by you uh, to supplement any specific uh, company workflows or data streams that you need to account for that maybe not be as generic as what Tecla provides. Um, they are implemented the exact same way as many of our default UDAs are in the environment, and that's done by defining the attribute definitions and associating those definitions to specific objects inside of the object IMP file. So to paint that picture a little bit better, let's look at the contents of an object IMP file or an input file. Now this is a plain text file that contains the definition of different user defined attributes. Now keep in mind Tegla can reference many object IMP files from multiple locations as stated before. So you can have these in firm folders and project folders that you only use part of the time, some of the time, or for specific instances. Um, inside of an object IMP file you're going to find some key elements. Um, first, the definition of the attribute. These parameters, and we'll break this down here on the next slide, uh, of what goes into defining an actual attribute. Uh, now these attributes are listed under a header. This header contains uh, all the attributes that will show up on a tab. So you can look at the header as the tab page, as it says there right in the image. Uh, and then lastly, we'll direct that tab page to be applicable to certain objects. So down here below, we are using our poor card tab page and we are applying this uh, to poor units uh, specifically. However, other examples you may see uh, parameters or concrete parameters applied to concrete beams, concrete columns, concrete slabs, and so on and so forth. So you may have quite the list uh, down here below on where one tab and those. So with that, we have a basic understanding of how current UDAs are, uh, are created and implemented inside of Tecla, and it's really no different um, in implementing your own custom ones. You just have to actually create them. The cool thing, though, is that it doesn't really require any coding knowledge. Understanding of the syntax, which is what we just covered and why we just covered it, is pretty much all you're going to really need, and actually it's more helpful than a requirement as it, as it is. Um, you don't necessarily have to copy an existing object IMP file uh, and then edit it and you don't necessarily have to start with a blank text file editor because we have a tool in the warehouse called um, use part user attribute setup that's going to help define that entire file for us with the user interface. So let's take a quick peek on how this tool actually operates and how you could use it to create your own custom UDAs. Okay. So once you've downloaded the user attribute setup tool and uh, uh, ran the installer, you're actually going to get um, an exe file. It is not an extension that goes natively into Tecla. It's its own executable. So save it to your desktop or other file path where you, you, you may f you find it easy to get to. Uh, when you double click on it, it's going to open up the dialog box that we saw in the previous slides. and here we have a nice little welcome message saying, hey, do you want to run through the, the uh, guided tour, if you will? If you hit yes, it's going to start to highlight and step through each one of the, the process in order, in order to create an attribute and assign it to a tab page and then determine what it is here that you're going to go ahead and apply it to. Again, so this is your attribute definition. This is where that resides once you add that information. 
this is the where the uh, the the tabs uh, that that attribute will be applied to the tab list and then also down here when you're checking these boxes it'll associate with those types of objects once you get through that you hit OK and then create um, so we're gonna we're actually gonna step through this um, really quickly and then we're gonna look at a, maybe a slightly more specific example I'm actually gonna let this thing play out for us since I've been chatting so much over it um, and then we're gonna go and use what they've put in here just to get an idea of, of what's going on so it's kind of autopilot for me as it is but now we just need to step eight press, press the create button and that, there it is now one thing that's really cool uh, before I do that is if you hit the instructions button here it's gonna bring up a dialogue that's gonna you can have that open um, take a snapshot of it because it won't let you actually interact until you close so uh, but this will help you step through those process if you forget what step three is and you're on uh, you know step five that sort of thing um, but here let's go ahead we'll just use this default stuff we'll hit add and we'll hit add there and then we're going to go ahead and hit create um, and then we're just going to save it to a place we'll do it to the desktop and we'll just add a underscore and we'll put base camp there we are okie dokie oh it's on my other monitor there here we are so uh, let's go ahead I'll close this for the moment and let's just take a look at what it quickly produces so this looks slightly familiar from the example in the slideshow we've got um, overall listing that this applies to parts and we have our tab page here and our single attribute that we created um, my te uh, text on my dialogue the tutorial attribute and then what looks different from our previous example is the list of parts here that it things apply to. So concrete beams, columns, contour plates, strip footings, and so on and so forth. So that those check boxes in that dialog box really kind of help do that. Notice that for each one of those, the, the, the uh, tab page has been applied here. Um, one thing to talk about this is this numerical value here at the end of that listing for the tab page. That's kind of its order with all the other tabs on the UDA dialog box. So parameters is usually I think 8 or 10. I can't remember off the top of my head. So to avoid con con conflicting with anything that's existing usually we start at 100. Um, at, at least the tool does and it's a good practice. So now that we had a quick look let's step through you know get an idea of what it is to take to implement something that's meaningful. Um, I'm gonna use an example here um, I have a Trimble Connect open, and inside Trimble Connect, if um, if you haven't uh, seen the the things called property sets, these are properties you can create right in Trimble Connect and right to objects, but they don't exist in Tecla. And we go over a workflow on how to copy that back into the model. But sometimes those attributes don't exist inside of Tecla proper, and that's where custom UDA is, is one one use case where they come in handy. And so if we're looking at this like kind of generic report card, I have fields here like plan review. Is it yes, was the plans reviewed? Uh, form locations. The idea here is that people will select objects or pores in the model, select this, provide the value, and write to the object. It's kind of a statusing type uh, workflow. So approve, rejected, pending on form location, installation, cracks, that sort of thing. I thought it would be a good idea to kind of take something from inside Trimble Connect and use this to our advantage. So um, we'll create a couple of these to create an object IMP. So I'll move that off to the side really quick. I'm going to reopen this part attributes. Uh, I'm going to skip the tutorial this time. So we'll just do, I don't know, two or three uh, of these attributes just to get an idea here. So let's go ahead and do the name. One thing that I typically do is I give this kind of like a prefix, each one of these, so that they can be associated together. Um, I'm going to go a little on the nose since this represents a generic type of poor card. We're just going to do card. I'm going to keep everything in caps and I'm going to go card plan review. And then we'll just say plan review. Oops. Now I want this to be a string. So I want to be able to uh, populate that, that data from Trimble Connect, write it in through the attribute importer, or populate it directly by typing inside a tech list structures and then report on it. So then I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then we'll step down to the next one. I'm going to keep that prefix and we'll say, OK, how about for the form work, have the form locations or is the form on the correct location so we'll do for form location and then uh, we'll provide that display name so form location there we are and we'll hit add it's pretty straightforward it's actually quite repetitive um, 
let's go ahead and add well maybe just one more but we'll change it up we'll go um, reinforcement or rebar we'll do rebar it's easier to type uh, rebar placement and then there we are and add so <clears throat> As we do that, now we need to give our tab a name. Um, so let's call this just simply pour card. This could be my company's attributes. It could be um, pre-construction checklist. It could be anything that you want. Uh, this tab number here, I'm going to stick with 100 for now. Um, and what types of parts to add this to? Now, here's the interesting thing. These are all parts, right? Beams, columns, concrete. Uh, strip footings and panels and all that sort of stuff. that's all lovely um, but that actually doesn't apply to pores uh, you notice this tool kind of predates the pore technology so um, you can normally just check whatever applies and then leave it alone one thing I'll do is I'll show you a little trick on how to get it to apply to a pore unit so for my own uh, purposes I'm just gonna leave one of these checked um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit add the pore card there and then I'm gonna hit create yeah, and ask me, we'll go back to the desktop and I'll just give this a postfix there of poor card. There we go. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and take a look at our results. Here we are. Uh, pretty uh, straightforward and simple, right? We have our, our parts, and uh, but we're going to have to change some things here. And the reason I chose to do this to pores is to show you, well, hey, you know, it's, it's straightforward to do it to any kind of part, right? But if you do want to do it to a poor object or, or a poor unit, then it's going to be a slightly different uh, process where we're going to have to make some manual edits, and I did want to highlight that. So let's do that right now. So up at the top, instead of part, we're going to need to change this to the correct syntax for a poor unit. It's pretty simple, poor unit. Now, I'll point out that if you do go into the system folders and look for uh, objects or just search for iObject IMP, there is a poor unit one already available. So you can use that as a visual example. Remember, do not edit that file. If you need to, make a copy and save it elsewhere to view. Um, the other thing too here is I don't really like this this page name of TOAS 100 um, and uh, it's populated in a couple of spots so we can always do a find and replace um, oops, let's go R for replace Edit. there we are so let's go ahead and change this from TOAS underscore 100 to poor card with an underscore in between there we are and then replace all okay so now I have a more applicable tab name and that I've changed all of those there to kind of associate now here are my my uh, my attributes it also gives this tool which you can leave is um, uh, some prefixes ahead of what I placed ATT 100 personally I, I don't want that um, you don't have to delete them and you don't have to even come into the file once it's been created you can just put it into your firm folder uh, but if you like to do a little house cleaning, this is how you'd go about it. Once we're done, we're just going to hit save. Now, when, when, with that, all we need to do is place this in a project or a, um, a firm folder and save our model and reopen, and those attributes will be available for us uh, in Techless Structures. Now, just to tie everything home, um, I have a firm folder that I've been using to build some of my base camp stuff and uh, I have uh, this completed poor card um, objects IMP um, and I have a model now that's opened up inside of Tecla structures and if we're just double checking uh, I want to show you here that we are pointing uh, when it comes to the firm, that base camp firm is right here. So I'm already pointing there just to kind of show you the correlation. Um, it's applied to poor unit, so we have to turn poor on and then turn on selecting um, assemblies and then select the poor unit and then go to user defined attributes. And then we can have poor card. And there it is. So now we, if we wanted to, could localize these customizing the properties pane to show these on the uh, properties pane for poor units. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or other topics, 
please visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.